Well, hey, welcome to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie. Hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. We're going to talk about how to play Flesh and Blood. For the last year and a half or whatever, I've had this YouTube channel. I've been trying to figure out what I wanted to do to kind of give you a way to learn how to play the game or my explanation on how you could teach your friends on how to play the game. Uh, and I just haven't been able to figure out a way to do it in a really concise and easy way. Flesh and Blood is a big game. It's a deep game. It's a thinking game. It's a critical thinking game. And how do you teach that to somebody who may not be at that level yet? So um, recently I've been playing a lot of commoner blitz and I found this deck, this KO deck that I absolutely love. And it's a ton of fun to play and it's really easy to play. And I think it teaches you the basics on how to play flesh and blood really, really well, how to manage your hand, how to respond, how to react. I think it's the perfect entry to how to play a game. So whether this is your first video on how to play Flesh and Blood or if you've become a master at the game and you're looking for a way to, to learn how to teach somebody, I think this is gonna be really good. So let's hop in. Again, this is gonna be kind of a, I, I thought about doing like a fully edited video, but I decided I wanted to pretend like you were here and I was teaching you how to play the game. Uh, so I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have some fun with it. So welcome to my official how to play Flesh and Blood video. First off, um, Hope you're doing great. So this is your play mat. This is your your playing field right here. You've got your weapon, your hero uh, weapon. You can have two weapons, one two hand, you know, whatever. But um, you know, th that's not. Go look at the deck list. Take my deck list. Net deck my deck list, and you'll have that kind of built for you. We're gonna be playing Ko, and this is our hero. And now uh, Commoner Blitz. Your LGS will tell you if you're allowed to play with a rare hero. And our Thursday night Discord server, we do a uh, once a month. We do Commoner, and everyone's all about doing. Doing rare heroes uh it's fine that's the only you know again this is to teach you how to play your lgs may do things differently you may not be able to play a commoner rare hero i don't think that's great but um ko is a great commoner hero if you're allowed to play that um even though it's a rare hero a lot of people will allow that uh, and this is his ability and every hero has an ability so uh ko has 19 life that's what that is down there and he draws four cards at the beginning of his uh, turn. No, at the end of his turn. So you draw cards at the end of your turn. That's like the biggest thing. I just ruined it. This is the biggest thing that's different from most TCGs. You draw cards at the end of your turn equal to your intellect, which is there for. Uh, KO, whenever you play an attack action card with six or more base power, we'll talk about that later. That's not important. So that's where your hero goes. And then KO has a two-handed weapon, right? Two-handed weapon with a four attack that's gonna go there. We'll talk about that later as well. And then over here, you have your equipment slot. So uh, KO is going to be running the Hope Merchant's Hood. He's got the gauntlets that are Goliath gauntlets uh, on his arms. He's got the chest piece here that's the heart and cross strap. And he's got the iron rot legs. Let me move my camera so you can kind of see that a little bit better, My uh, a little less glary for you. Uh, well, you know, that's not important. That's what you're going to have. Uh, we'll kind of talk about opportunities to use your equipment here in a couple minutes um, as we learn about the game. Um, and so that's uh, that's the setup, right? And then right here, you've got your, this is where your deck goes, obviously. Uh, and then you, you your discard pile. This is your banish zone. And this is what's called the pitch area. So let's, let's get into a little bit about the game. Um, before we do that, I want to tell you why I picked this deck. Number one, it is fun. You're going to be rolling dice, which does not happen very often in Flesh and Blood. But you're going to be rolling dice. You're going to uh, be doing things. It's a fun deck. It's not a high competitive deck. It's just simply put, it's the most fun that I've had playing Flesh and Blood is playing with this KO uh, Commoner Blitz deck. It's also cheap. I bet you this deck cost a dollar, two dollars. Now the sink below's are expensive. I mean, this deck costs twenty-five dollars total because of the sink below. Not even that. Twenty dollars, fifteen dollars. It's cheap. It's really easy to get into, uh, and most players will give you for free. I'm sure most people don't mind if you want to uh, proxy the sink below's. That's the most expensive card in the deck right here. It's probably a two to three dollar sink below. Um, anyway, it's cheap. Uh, and then number three, it's just got a basic level of entry. Everything we're going to be talking about is a pretty basic function that is extremely easy to understand. So uh, let's take a look at the four. There's only four types of cards 
cards in this deck. I, I can break down this deck for you in four types of cards. Uh, your first type of card are these big attacks. And let's take a look at what a card is in Flesh and Blood uh, real quick. So in the top corner of your card uh, on the right, you've got the cost of this card. So Wrecker Romp costs two. Now there are two different versions. Actually, there are three different versions of Wrecker Romp in this deck. Every one of these Wrecker Romps will cost you two resources. Um, they are different colors because they give different benefits elsewhere. But every single card with a name on the card, up to this point at least, will always have the same uh, cost. So Wrecker Romp is a two cost. So you need to generate two resources in order to pay the cost of this card. Um, and in order to generate resources, you're going to end up what's being, what's called pitching a different card. So your pitch value is right there. So almost every card, most cards will have a cost and a pitch and you can use the cards and you put the pitch, you technically are supposed to play the card first and then you pay the resources. So you would pitch three here uh, to pay that cost of two and you are floating one resource. That's kind of how the, the overall game play. We'll get that into it in a minute, but uh, that's the way that the, the card's set up. And then this stack of cards, if I didn't tell you already, is the kind of the big damage cards. This is the big attacks. And uh, that's down here. This this card does eight damage. Uh, you can see as the card um, pitches for less, this card only pitches for one, it deals eight damage. This card, same card, pitches for three, and it only does six damage. So the card kind of balances itself out, whereas the effect is always the same on the card. The, um, the damage value and the pitch value kind of balance each other out. And then uh, the other corner here is the block value. So the card can also be used. So this card can be played. Um, it can be played to deal six, to deal eight damage, or it can be pitched to you know do something else for another card to play another card. You know, like this one could be pitched to play this record around, or the card can be used to block and blocking is free. And that's, we'll talk about the different reaction phrases here in a minute, but for the most part, blocking is free. So you could use this record romp to block somebody else's six attack. You'd be blocking three and then you would take uh, three damage. Everything has trample from magic basically. Uh, so that's the, the outline of the card. And then of course you have the ability here uh, that in this case, as an additional cost to play record romp, you discard a random card. So that's the kind of overview of a card. Um, and in this deck, we have four, I'm going to call them four categories of cards. You've got uh, your high powered attack. So uh, these are going to actually trigger KO's ability. All these cards, let's see how many there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 of these cards in the deck are going to trigger KO's ability that whenever you play an attack with an action, or sorry, whenever you play attack action card with a six or more base power, you roll that six sided die. On a one to four, you're gonna have the attack's base power. So if it was a six, it would now be a three, but on a five or a six, you double it. So if it was a six, now it's a 12. You can see where this is gonna go. Um, and, and so that's why those are there. So these are like the big powerful attacks. Then of course, in order to pay for those attacks, uh, you know, things that are two resources, you're going to need to generate resources so these cards are all basically here to generate resources there's a couple of utility cards baked in you don't need to worry about that the first couple of times you're playing for the most part these blue cards are here the blue cards that don't have a three uh, or a six value or more are here for you to pitch for resources so that you can pitch and play one of your big attacks and we'll talk about uh two card hands versus four card hands when we get into kind of the 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 really big um the way that this deck is supposed to work but that's this stack of cards uh, so you're pitching to play cards. Uh, the other thing that you need to be doing is blocking and keeping yourself alive. So these are called uh, keep yourself alive cards. And these are actually all free to play. You'll see uh, they are all zero cost, but they are defense reactions. You see right there in the bottom there, it is a defense reaction. Uh, so for the most part, whenever you pay, play defense reactions, you're going to need to pay the cost. Um, we'll talk about the turn order, uh, but that's just something important to remember uh, that you have to pay the cost. Well, in this case, the cost is zero. So you're able to, to block with these for four damage. So these cards are simply put keeping you alive and we'll get more into it here in a minute. Uh, there are uh, eight cards that are there to keep you alive. 
Uh, and then the last kind of stack of cards, I'm going to call them jugular cards. These are the ones that you're going to play on your four card hands when you're going to play a four card hand. Uh, and I'm going to say to go for the jugular, you're trying to get a giant kind of roll off a KO to be able to attack for like 25 damage. And you start with, you know, your opponent's going to start with 20 life. So it's going to be great. So those are kind of the, the big, huge, I call them go for the jugular cards. There are six logisms in there. Uh, that we'll talk about when we get there. So those are kind of the four different categories of cards. So let's talk about a, a basic turn structure in a game to kind of learn how to play Flesh and Blood. So uh, like I said, at the beginning of the game, you're going to draw yourself four cards. Um, on the first turn, at the end of the turn, the defensive person also uh, draws back to four cards. But then the rest of the game, if you use cards to block with on defense, you start with less cards on your turn. So uh, let's just pretend here that I had, uh, you know, this uh, blue slogism, a sink below, and uh, let's do a wrecker rump, and then any other card. We'll call it a yellow slogism. Uh, let's say that was in my hand and my opponent attacks me. Let's just pretend that my opponent does whatever they're doing and they attack me for six. We're not even going to read the effect. Uh, we're just going to pretend like they're just attacking me for a regular six. Well, now it's my turn. I have the, it, the priority basically to block with something. So I could put down, if I wanted to, I could put down for free a wrecker rump. I'm not telling you that this is the best way to play, but this is a, just a regular card. It's not a reaction and it blocks for three. So I could block three of their six. Now it is their priority. They have priority to play what's called an attack reaction. In this case, they could lay down another card that had, it would say, attack reaction on the bottom of the card, and they could add to their attack, basically. They could pump it after I've already blocked. Now let's back up for a second. I also could have blocked with some of my equipment. And in this case, the only thing I would have had was the iron rot legs. And if I would have blocked with them, uh, then that would be the only time the scheme that I could block with the iron rot legs. Uh, but then they have the, the opportunity to do an attack reaction. Uh, after the attack reaction step, if they pass, in this case, uh, they're attacking for six. I block for three. They're not going, they are choosing to pass priority. They're not going to play an attack reaction. Now it's my priority again, and I can play a defense reaction. In this case, I will play a red sink below. It costs me zero. Uh, if it did have a cost because it is a defense reaction, it would have cost me uh, whatever the cost was um, because you don't play defense reactions. You can't block with defense reactions for free. Uh, I will block for four. So now I am blocking for, for seven total, and they're attacking me for six. And I may put a card from my hand into uh, the bottom of my deck. And I would, in this case, choose to do that. And let's pretend that I drew, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, the, you know, I would choose to do that. So you have that ability. So now I've blocked all the damage. Their turn is done. Uh, and, you know, we'll get into on our turn what go again means and all that stuff. But uh, basically their turn is done. Now on the first turn of the game, this now means that I get to draw back two cards. Now, if this was any other turn of the game, I would not draw back to my hand size of four. Any other turn of the game, if I had blocked with two cards, now I'm starting my my game, my turn, with only two cards in my hand. And this is where we get into this idea in Flesh and Blood that kind of for me, it was the biggest picture that I had to wrap my brain around for the game, which is that the main mechanic of this game is managing your hands, managing your hand size um, and, and managing what cards you have in your hand so you can still do things on your turn. So now let's play one of my turns. And uh, I think that really uh, with KO, you've got two options. And that's why I chose this deck. You really have either two options. You're either gonna play a two card hand or a four card hand. So uh, really in this game, uh, what happens is that at the beginning of your turn, you have what's called an action point. I like to think of it as a red light or a green light. When you have an action point, you have a green light. You get to do something. You can go. You can play the game. Uh, you get to do what's called an action. And in this game, the action that you're going to be doing in KO deck, the main action that you're going to be doing is using a big attack action. So let's just take a random four card hand here and see what's going to happen. Um, I have a demolition crew. This is going to be my goal is going to be to play this card. 
And uh, in this case, I can't do it uh, because of the way this works. Uh, but on my turn, maybe I played a sink below and I sunk a card below. Um, let's just see what happens. All right, now I have the Wrecker Romp. So that's a much better hand size here. So on my turn, I had played the sink below to block four damage, and now I have a three card hand. Well, what am I gonna do with a three card hand? The goal here is going to be to play a six attack action. So I have what's called um, an action point, right? I have a green light to do something. So I am going to choose to play a Wrecker Romp. Um, and in order to do that, I'm going to pitch, I'm going to play a Wrecker Romp. So what you do is you say, I play a card and I'm going to play a Wrecker Romp. It costs me two resources. As an additional cost, I have to discard a random card uh, to play. So I would actually pitch for that. And then an additional cost would be discard a random card with only a card in my hand. And now I have one floating resource. So I have now used my action point. Even if I had more cards in my hand, I couldn't do anything with them because I don't have any action points in order to do any reason. Even though I have a resource, I don't have any action points. So this is the only thing that I will be able to do on my turn unless something else gives me go again. Now in the game, there are other things that can give you go again. That's not important right now. Um, so now I'm attacking for seven. KO's ability triggers and uh, KO's ability says, obviously you roll the die and anything is uh, increased or decreased. So on a one to four, I'm gonna lose, seven's gonna be a three. And on a five or six, seven's gonna be a 14. So let's see what's going on. I got a one, so now I'm only attacking for three. Not a very good turn, but it is what it is. My opponent now has to block for three. My turn ends, my uh, my card goes in the discard pile, my pitch, the resources disappear, the card goes on the bottom of my deck, and now I draw four cards again. And so now it's the decision time. This is where I'm saying, again, everything is all about making decisions so that on your turn, you can do things. Um, so. Uh, let's talk about some of those decision-making things. I think when you're looking at your hand with uh, KO, what you're looking for is, are you going to have a two-card hand or a four-card hand? And here's what I mean by that. If you can go for the jugular, is what I'm going to call it, then you should just keep your four-card hand and just take all the damage. You shouldn't block with anything because your hand is good enough for you to do a massive turn of damage. What your goal is on this deck is to potentially roll and swing for like 30 damage. So for a t if you roll five or six to swing for a ton of damage. And how you do that is by playing slogism. So if you had a like a red slog a slogism in your hand, uh, red slogism is going to give your card plus six. If you had a red slogism and hopefully you have a wrecker romp, uh, and really the only way to pull this one off, I think in this deck, uh, we'll see is going to be, have something in your arsenal, which we should get to, uh, let's get into this arsenal side. Cause I've been avoiding it. Cause I think it is one of the more difficult functions to understand in the game. So on your turn, you can play cards. And at the end of the card, the turn, if you have an extra card in your hand, um, you actually any number of cards in your hand, you can put a card into your arsenal so that you can draw four cards and have a, essentially a fifth card. Well, in this deck, what your goal is, is to put either a slogism or a wrecker romp in your arsenal. Now, if you don't have a slogism or a wrecker romp, uh, you could also put in like a fate for scene or a, uh, another red card really is best. Um, red cards in your arsenal are great because you cannot pitch from your arsenal. This is not part of your hand. It is your arsenal. Uh, so you can play a card from your arsenal. So you can play a defense reaction from your arsenal, or you can play an action from your arsenal, but you cannot pitch a card from your arsenal. So you can't, if this predatory assault was in your arsenal, you couldn't pitch it in order to get, generate resources to pay for something. Um, so in this case, for your big kind of four card hand, if you're able to pull it off, what you wanna have is like a slogism in your arsenal, a blue card in hand, actually you're gonna need two blue cards in hand, and then uh, just any other card essentially. Uh, and the goal of this turn is that you're going to play the slogism from your arsenal. So you're going to pitch uh, three in order to play a slogism. The next attack action card with cost two or greater this turn gains six. So this is an action. So it has used your action point. Your red light went from red. Sorry, your green right light went from green to red when you played the card. But slogism has what's called 
go again. And when something has go again, that allows you to turn your, your green light was red and now it is back green again so you can play something. Uh, so you've played your Slogism. Now you're going to pitch another three and play your Wrecker Romp. You have to discard another random card. Your Wrecker Romp is a base eight. So you are going to roll your dice and uh, potentially double your base power. Now let's say that you rolled and you hit a five. Now your base power is 16 plus you have your plus six. Uh, and that is now allowing you 16 plus 22 damage on your turn. That's a massive amount of damage. Uh, it, that is a huge amount of damage, especially in commoner. Uh, so that's great. It's awesome. That's kind of your your big card hand. So the, the way that this works then is that you're you're making decisions on what you should be playing, a two card hand or a four card hand. And when you play that four card hand, you're really going for the juggler. So you're taking a lot of damage in order to hopefully hit a five and roll big. But even if you didn't roll big, this base power would have been four. You're still swinging for 10 with that slogism, which is really good. Now, another thing that you can do, uh, you, you can set up a big turn with your equipment as well. So in this case, uh, heart and cross strap, you can actually, as an action, right, your green light, you can destroy this card and the next attack action you play costs two less resources and then you get your green light back off of that go again. So your slog is, so your, um, your wrecker rock then would be free because it costs two less resources. So you would put that in there. Your record romp costs two less. Additionally, you could have played this Goliath Gauntlet that you destroy Goliath Gauntlet. The next attack action card would cost two or greater. So your wrecker romp uh, gains plus two. And now this card again, the green light turns on because you have go again. So now you were swinging for, uh, so your eight would have been 16 plus two plus six so you're swinging for 24 damage instead of 22 so that's how you use your equipment to boost your attack those are other things you can do but that's like a one-time use thing so you also have to be kind of figuring out how to maintain that advantage throughout the game um the last thing in this deck it's just not super important you always kind of can fall back on though your weapon and uh so let's say somebody attacks you for a big amount of damage you always want to keep the pressure on your opponent and do something on your turn so maybe you are just keeping one blue pitch back so you're going to block with three cards from your hand you're going to block in this case you're going to block uh eight damage to prevent somebody from really dealing damage to you you still have your blue card you can pitch your blue card for the romping club it doesn't really do much um but you are essentially attacking for uh, for four damage. It, it's it's just a way to keep some pressure on if there's nothing more that you can do. The Romping Club is not going to be used a ton. It doesn't trigger KO because it's not an attack action card. Um, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's really all I got for you in terms of how to play the game. It's really not that complicated. I think the biggest complication of Flesh and Blood is understanding that you're managing your hand. You're, you're making decisions on your opponent's turn of what you're going to do on your turn. So look at it as either a two card hand where you're just uh, pitching a card in order to play uh, a, you know, a smash with big tree. You're pitching three to play a smash with big tree, which is potentially 14 damage. There's your two card hand or thinking of a four card hand, uh, maybe even including your arsenal to do something bigger on your turn. Um, those are really the only things that you need to know in order to try playing out commoner blitz. It's really easy. It's super fun. I think this is the most fun way to play flesh and blood. I think it's the most easy way to teach flesh and blood, uh, because it's not a ton of decision making. You're not, you're just, you know, if it kind of decides for yourself, if you have a sink below, you're probably going to use it to block probably not going to do a four card hand that turn instead you're just going to do a two card hand and arsenal uh there, there's just a, not a ton of decision making to happen and i think it's a really easy deck to play it's fun to play because you're rolling and you get to do some sweet damage anyway uh that's all i got for you if you're looking for a place to play we do play commoner blitz on thursday nights uh once a month on uh sorry we have a thursday night armory event every month uh but on thursday nights once a month we play commoner blitz it's a ton of fun uh, in the discord server over at the patreon uh and anyway i hope you guys have a great day remember to be kind to the people around you and we will see you again in another video